All right, so they walked away from Grimsley. They were dropping off some vials of Ventasium, and he owed 10. No, he owed 15. He only gave them 10, and they decided that they could be even, right? Once they were past the door, Bastion Black started to walk quickly. So quickly that Leo nearly broke into a jog to keep up. The captain didn't stop until he turned a corner. He looked around and then removed the pentars from his jacket, counting them all carefully. All there, Boo asked. Baz nodded, though he didn't look happy. Well, that went better than expected, Kat said. Nobody got shot, at least. And we got paid what we deserved. Not exactly, Baz said. This is for 15. We only gave him 10. This is for 15. We only gave him 10. Bez dropped the pentars back into his pocket. What are you talking about? Cat asked. There were 15 cores in that case. I counted. Oops, I had the numbers wrong. There were 15 containers, but five of them were empty. Grimsley always takes one of the middle, so, middle to test. Never from the ends. Every time. Besides, he's been short changing us on the price of V for a while now. He deserves it. So much for honor among thieves. Wait, so when he does test them all, isn't he going to be pretty angry? Leo asked. He's going to be thoroughly cranked, which is why we need to move. Besides, I'm pretty sure he wants to kill me anyway, Baz continued. I saw it in his eyes when he said goodbye. He'll collect the bounty on my head and use me as an example to others who don't make their deliveries in full on time. That's good business, at least as far as he's concerned. So how long do we have, Blue asked. Well, knowing Grimsley, he's probably testing the other courts as we speak, so we should probably be on the ship in about five minutes. Leo took a second to process what Baz was saying. Wait, so we're leaving already? <coughs> Excuse me. But you said, I know what I said, kid, and you are more than welcome to hang out here and try to find some other ship to hitch a ride with, but the Icarus and its crew are leaving. Cat glared at ba ba Baz, Baz, drilling holes into him like an Icarian excavator. What? Seriously, Baz. We can't just leave him here, she said. Look at him. He won't last a day in this place. I'm not the one to suggest who suggested him feeding to the snids. Black countered. I was kidding. He's just a kid. What's he supposed to do? Maybe not stow away aboard my ship, for starters. Leo's eyes danced from Cat to the captain. He didn't disagree with her. He probably wouldn't last a day, but he also didn't know why she was all of a sudden sticking up for him. She'd seemed plenty serious about blowing him out of the airlock earlier. A loaded look passed between the two pirates, a conversation somehow transmitted with chin juts and frowns. Finally, Baz turned to, to Leo. You can do whatever you want. Stay here. Come with us. Your choice. But we are getting out of here now. End of debate. The captain continued his quick steps. Cat shook her head and followed, one hand still resting on the butt of her pistol. Leo looked up at Boo, who shrugged all four palms turned upward. Sometimes it's better to sleep out in the rain and then to risk going into the cave, the Quiletti said. Leo's finger felt for the hole in his shirt where his patch had been. Touching the bare skin underneath, his hands were cold. This whole place was cold as if the void of space managed to sneak its way through the hull of the ship somehow and worm its way inside him. Stay here in this unfamiliar place full of unfriendly faces and people like Grimsley or take his chance with the crew of Icarus. It wasn't an easy choice. The rain sucked, sure, but you didn't know what you could be lurking in the cave. At least with Bastion Black, Leo knew what he was getting into. Sort of. Leo nodded. Come on then, Boo said. They caught up to Baz and Cat at the end of the corridor where it intersected with the main hall leading into the hangar bay. Cat was peeking around the corner. We're too late already, she said. Two sentries right by the hangar entrance. Same kind as the ones in Grimley's chamber. So what's the plan? How do we get to the ship? Boo asked. Only two by the entrance, Baz said, but we're guess I'm guessing Grim's got more inside. We start blasting out. They'll close the hangar doors and lock us in before we can even get the ship powered up. Unless... The captain grabbed the co communicator from his jacket. Skits, are you there? Skits, come in. No reply. Skits, we got a situation out here. Do you copy? Still silence. She's ignoring you, Kat said. She's not ignoring me. She's a robot. It's not like she left her communicator on the bridge while she went to the bathroom. It's part of her hardware. I keep telling you, you need to reprogram her. Her protocols are completely whacked. Whatever evolutionary algorithm you've got her programmed with is stuck in pouty teenager mood. Pretty soon, she's going to flip a switch, hijack the ship, and crash us into an asteroid just to make a point. It's just a phase. She'll get over it. Kat gave him a dirty look. Whatever. I'm just saying a normal robot would answer your calls. 
Baz peeked around the corner again. If one of us could sneak past those guards and get to the Icarus, fire up the engines, except we're all wanted. They are probably looking for all of us. Maybe all of you, Leo said. The pirates all stared at him, and for a moment he regretted opening his mouth. But then he thought of Kat sticking up for him just now and Boo standing tall beside him in Grimsley's chamber. He thought of his brother's last words before closing the cargo hatch. Be brave, Leo. Grimsley just met me, Leo continued. Maybe the guards aren't on the lookout for me. I could slip past them into the hangar, get to the ship, find skits. Forget it, Baz said. Nothing about you is sneaky. I managed to get on your sh ship without you knowing, Leo said, though really that had been mostly Gareth's doing. Boo snorted. <laughs> he has a point. And what if the security bots do recognize you, Kat said. That's when you guys come charging in, Leo said. At least he hoped. Baz was still, was still skeptical. And how do we know you won't just turn us over to Grimsley, hoping he'll help you with some kind of reward? The thought honestly hadn't even crossed Leo's mind. That sounds like something a pirate would do. As soon as he said it, Leo regretted it. But Baz surprised him with a laugh. Okay, kid, we'll watch your back. Once you're in, go straight to the Icarus and tell Skits we've got a code 14. She'll take it from there. Code 14. Leo repeated. And whatever happens, once you get aboard that ship, you stay on. Find somewhere safe and hunker down. Things could get messy, and I don't need you getting in the way. Got it? Leo, got it, Leo said. This is a bad idea, Boo muttered. Yeah, but it's my bad idea for once. It isn't my bad idea for once, Baz said. Good luck, Ninja Turtle. With another deep breath, Leo turned the corner back into the main corridor, facing the hangar and the pair of security bots guarding the entrance. The Akari seldom used mechanical mechanicals for security. One Ikari soldier was equal to five armed robots, but two armed robots was probably equal to a dozen Leos. They certainly looked menacing enough. Their armor plating suggested something like the medieval knights Leo learned about in ancient history. Their faces were more like jack-o'-lanterns, slits for mouths, and point down red triangles for eyes that pulsed each time someone passed, probably scanning faces. Leo hoped his wasn't one of the faces they were looking for. Hoped he was right, and Grimsley didn't count him as one of the Icarus's crew. As he merged with the crowd, he fitted in between a pair of teratrins, a species he had at least seen before. Their tall frames dwarfing Leo's own. With their beak-like noses and leathery brown skin, they looked a lot more like a mutant turtle than he did. He moved in close, close enough to walk in their shadow and overhear their conversation. The Jeric have captured three planets out near Orion's arm, taken over their refineries, and forced the population into labor camps. I don't think there's a planet left that one of the two haven't touched. He was only 10 meters from the hangar now. Leo could see that the security bots weren't top-of-the-line models. Their armor was really already dented and warped. Nobody in this, nothing in this place looked new. Even the robots were used goods, but the guns seemed plenty functional. If one side doesn't win soon, there won't be a galaxy left, left to rule over. Rule over? No doubt that's what the Jericks would do, seek to control every planet still remaining after the war was over. But it was the exact opposite of everything the Coalition stood for, though the two aliens Leo was trailing obviously didn't see it that way. It's all about the resources and who gets to control them. Doesn't matter the cost, it's all about greed if you ask me. Greed and control. Eight meters. Leo froze as a mechanical head swiveled in his direction. He felt those pulsing red eyes taking him in. Any second now, he expected a mechanical voice to command him to halt as the rifle barrels converged on him. He resisted the urge to t look back over his shoulder, to sig signal for help, to take off running. He hoped Cap could shoot as well as she could kick. Stay cool, keep your head down, just breathe. Five meters from the door, almost, ev almost even with the guards, the ones still watching him, scanning him, processing. They're not looking for you. Sometimes I wish there wasn't even such a thing as L486, one of the ter Terratins said. That would fix all. Except how would we get back home? That's the point. We never would have had to leave to begin with. Two meters. Almost there. What would Gareth say if he knew what his little brother was going to do right now? No doubt he wouldn't have codgled him onto, the, onto that ship. They would have faced whatever awaited them together instead of him going alone. Leo closed his eyes as he stepped over the threshold and onto the hangar. The security bots gave no orders to stop. They hadn't been scanning him for scanning for him at all. Because I'm not a pirate, he thought. No, he was just a kid. A kid who was sneaking around, dodging guards, looking to blast his way out of the hangar in order to avoid the wrath of a black market dealer of V, who'd just been swindled. Leo frowned. No, nothing unseemly about that at all. A little bit of verbal irony for you there.